Last week, Peter, you're my rock. This week, get behind me, Satan. In the same conversation, just a few minutes apart, how did he go from being the rock to the agent for the devil? Well, it reveals a great spiritual truth. And this truth shows up in our lives, most often in our friendships. It is the way we connect with others in our relationships that determines whether we are a rock or an obstacle. But to understand that, we have to start with a great truth. Our identity is fixed and cannot change. In the deepest sense, Peter did not go from being a rock to being the devil's agent, no. His true identity, his deep identity is unchanging always. He is a child of God. He was made by God in God's image. He is beloved and perfect. He is God's own child just as you are, and just as I am. If there were a blood test for child of God and he got tested, he would be positive. Child of God. Now, here's the thing. That is true. Scripture tells us for every single person who was made, because we were made by God. There are no children of the devil out there. That doesn't exist. If you were made, if you live on this planet, you were made by God, and you are a child of God. So that gets really interesting, though, because sometimes it's hard to notice that in someone. It's hard to see it. For example, depending on your persuasion, you may find it impossible to think that a Democrat or a Republican could be a child of God. That feels hard to imagine. Maybe you can't imagine the people on death row being children of God. Maybe you can't imagine a a wife beater or a child abuser being a child of God. But all of those people, if you were to test them, would test positive for child of God. So we have to figure out how we can keep that identity fixed inside of each of us and in the way we see others, even when the choices people make where the choices we make don't align with that. Because all of us have free will. We can do whatever we want. So we can be agents for God, or we can bat for the other team. We can be a rock, or we can be an obstacle. And that usually shows up in the way we talk to our friends and relatives. Now, let's be fair. Children of God are capable of doing horrible things. Prisons are filled with children of God. Everyone who's incarcerated is a child of God. And this one's hard to sometimes imagine. Anyone with a Facebook account is a child of God. Isn't that amazing? Sometimes when you're on social media, you think, well, obviously we've, we've crossed. No, they're all children of God. They're the only ones who can have a Facebook account. Every politician, even the one that you're thinking of right now that you can't stand, whoever that is for you, is a child of God. Isn't that perplexing? But our our behaviors, our choices, are not necessarily in alignment with our true identity. It's like the way we act and the way we choose to live can either be a window to our identity or a mask. That's that's a decision that all of us make with every choice that we have. Am I going to be a window for who I am, a child of God, or am I going to mask it? So this is often what we find in our relationships. So now Peter thinks of himself as Christ's best friend. So let's, let's review the conversation. Peter's like, I'm the rock. I'm his best friend. So Jesus says, hey, friends, with his best friend right there, listen, I've got some really hard news. I'm going to be accused of a crime I did not commit. And I'm going to be tried by a corrupt system. And I'm going to be killed. 
I'm going to be hung on a cross in front of everybody disgracefully. And I need you to have my back. And Peter says to him, oh, no, 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 no. We can find a workaround for that. Don't. Which is a lousy thing for a friend to say. Because it, this, this was his path. This was going to happen. So for his friend to not even listen, I bet you don't talk like that, don't talk like that. But then also to say, don't worry about God's plan. Well, we can find a workaround, don't you? I know a guy, don't worry, right? That is not supportive. It's almost like, and all of us know this image, whenever we are trying to make a decision, we have the good angel and the bad angel, and we've got friends that are good influences and bad influences, And when we're talking to our friends the way Peter was talking to Christ, we can choose to be the good angel or the bad angel. We could say, as Peter, if he were being a rock, could have said, I promise you, I will be with you. I promise you, I won't let you go through a minute of that alone. You have my word. That sounds so hard, and I will be there for all of it. And when we do that for a friend, We are a rock. We're as firm as granite. When we instead try to tell them, don't you worry, we can find a workaround, that is not being a good friend. And the examples of that are many. Now, it's interesting that Jesus said, get behind me, Satan, because, you know, the second commandment is don't ever take God's name in vain. And to say something as strong as Satan feels like, ooh, should we be talking like that? That's kind of a a strong way to talk. But I would like to say that I don't think that Jesus took Satan's name in vain. I think he meant it. But I also think he meant it for himself to hear, not for everybody else. It wouldn't have made it into scripture if we didn't hear it. But that is self-talk. That is not something we say to others. So I am saying that what happened was When Peter said, I know a guy we can, don't worry. When he said that, Jesus had to remind himself in a moment where Jesus would love a way out of this. Don't listen to that talking snake. Don't listen to that bad angel. Don't you dare give in because he's making it sound real good. He's making it sound real easy to get out of this. And it is not. So that get behind me Satan is a phrase that actually all of us should learn for ourselves. And here's why. You someday may go up to a friend, maybe your best friend, and say, I know I've been married for 25 years, but there's someone at work that I've been texting. And my spouse asked me what I was doing with my phone. I said, nothing and I'm hiding it from her, or I'm hiding it from him. And as a friend, you could say, well, you know what? After the way she or he has treated you, they have it coming. Good for you. If that is to happen, we need to say to ourselves, get behind me, Satan. You're an obstacle to me. Because that same friend could say, you know, that sounds really hard, and I... I know that that's not the direction you really want to go. You know what? Every time you feel like texting him or her, you can text me. I don't care what time of the day or night it is. I'll help you break the habit. You can text me. I'll be there. You're my rock. And on this rock, I can build a friendship. How about casual conversation at the Silver Spoon? Did you hear that so-and-so is getting divorced? And the friend could easily say... (laughs) for the third time, and I'll tell you what this is, cheating, of course it is. Think about who he is, think about who she is. Uh, Clearly it's cheating. Get behind me, Satan. Wouldn't it be better to say, you know, divorce is, is a tragedy, and I can just imagine how he feels or she feels going through this tragedy again. Imagine how much prayer that they need right now. You're my rock, and on this rock, I can build a friendship. That person doesn't need to shame us for gossiping. They can just redirect us. 
How about some of the bigger issues? We've all been on a patio when the subject of race comes up and somebody says something that sounds like it's right out of 1950 Alabama. And what do we say? Do we give up? <laughs> does, does somebody say something that causes us to say, oh boy, get behind me, Satan. You're an obstacle. Or could we say, don't talk like that. That's, that's beneath you. That's, that's not true. That's not fair. That's not accurate. Let's not do that here. You are a rock. And on this rock, I can build my friendship. Peter is a fantastic example for us because he sinned all the time, even right after he was called a rock by Jesus. But he also loved all the time. And even at this moment, when he was an obstacle to Jesus' plan, if we had given him a test for being a child of God, he would have tested positive. And so would you, and so would I, on our worst days and on our best days. What from Peter's life, what from the life of this child of God is speaking to you most this morning?